What's up my pre-calc people, Michael Princhak here, ready to talk to you about the open box problem. Now in any pre-calculus textbook, in any pre-calculus class, you're bound to do a unit or more on modeling. Modeling real world situations with functions, whether it be linear functions, quadratic functions, cubic functions, trigonometric functions, who knows, but modeling with functions is a pretty important topic when it comes to pre-calculus. Now one very, very famous problem is called the open box problem where we're modeling the volume of an open box with a cubic function. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. So the open box problem works like this. We got a piece of paper, whatever length, whatever width, whatever, whatever. And from that piece of paper, we're going to cut out a square from every single corner like this. So this and this are the exact same length, cut out a square. Then we're going to do that from every single corner of the piece of paper. And then we can take those edges and fold them up. And when we fold them up, we create a nice simple box. And a box has volume. And we all know the formula for volume is length times width times height. Now here's the thing with this box problem. How much are we going to cut out of the corners? Well, if we only cut out a teeny, teeny, teeny amount from each corner, then we're going to get a very short, almost flat, wide box. But if we cut out a big chunk from each corner, a big amount from every single corner, then we fold those edges up, we're going to get a very tall but skinny box. So the idea is that somewhere is that perfect amount to cut out that's going to create the maximum volume for that box. And that's exactly what these box problems center around. So here is our specific problem. We have a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard that's eight inches by 11 and a half inches. And we're going to cut out X from each corner. All right, we're going to cut out squares from each corner of length X. We're going to fold those edges up. And the question is, what is the maximum area that we could get based on X? But we first have to model this problem with a function. So the first part says, all right, let's create a function to model the volume of this box. Again, eight by 11 and a half piece of paper. And we're from each corner, we're going to cut out X. So it's going to look like this. We're going to start off with that eight by 11 and a half piece of paper. Makes a lot of sense. And then from each corner, we're going to cut out X. Now that means that the length of our box and the width of our box are both shortened by two X's because the, the width was eight, but now I've cut out X from each side. So it's eight minus two X. The width was 11, but now I, or 11 and a half. And now I cut out X from each corner. So now it's 11 and a half minus two X. And I'm going to fold those edges up to create my box. So the length of my box is eight minus two X. The width of my box is 11 and a half minus two X. Now real quick, what you call the length, what you call the width actually doesn't matter because you can rotate the box and now the length is the width and the width is the length. Doesn't really matter. As long as you know that one side of the box is eight minus two X. The other side of the box is 11 and a half minus two X. Then the height of the box is going to be X because remember we cut out X and when we fold that edge up, the height of the box is now that X value. So if we want to model the volume of this box, we have to remember the volume formula. The volume formula is length times width times height. So the length and the width, again, are interchangeable. That's the eight minus two X and the 11.5 minus two X. Multiply those together. And then finally, we've got to multiply by the height, which is just X. We get a nice, pretty simple cubic formula or a cubic function that models the volume of this open top box. Now, another very common question that typically follows the building of the model for the volume of the box is what's the domain? Well, now we're going to go back and think about that piece of paper that started off by eight and 11 and a half. And we got to remember that, you know, the domain is the values that we use for our inputs. And our input is X, how much we're cutting out of the corner. So what's the lowest we could cut out? Well, you first say, I can't cut out negative amount. That's impossible. I guess you could cut nothing, but then you wouldn't have a box. If I don't cut anything out of the edges, then I just have a flat piece of paper. I don't even have any volume to it because there is literally no height. If there's no height, there's no volume. Now, so I could cut out like 
just past zero, but like there is no number just past 0, 0.00001. I mean, I literally could cut out 0 0.001 from each corner and I'd have this extremely flat, very little volume box. But again, it is possible. Now, what is the most I could cut out? Well, some kids would say uh, eight inches. Well, actually, no, because the paper is only eight inches wide. So that actually means the most I could cut out would be just shy of four. Now, if I cut out four inches, well, from the long side, I could actually cut out four inches, but from the short side, that's only eight inches wide. If I cut out four inches, I would have nothing in the middle. I would literally be cutting the piece of paper in half. If it's eight inches wide and I cut down four inches from each side, I'm, I'm cutting it in half. And then once again, I don't even have a box. So I, the most I could cut out would be like just short of four. So essentially, we say the domain is zero to four with parentheses. So we zero is not included because you can't cut out zero. Four is not included because you can't cut out four. But it would be right in between or somewhere in between zero and four. Could be extremely, extremely small, creating a very flat box. Could be really, really close to four, like 3.9. That's going to be a very tall, skinny box with very low volume. But again, that's the domain, right? I could cut out any amount between zero and four. Now, some kids say, well, what about, you know, 11 and a half, half of 11 and a half, you know, five or whatever. I said, well, the problem is that, you know, yeah, I guess from the longer side, I could cut out more, but not from the shorter side. And X is something I cut out from every side. So even though I could cut out more from the longer side, I cannot cut out five inches at all because I don't even have five inches on both sides of the eight inches. So you got to go with that shorter side to create that domain. Now, the real question is, the big one, is what is the maximum volume and how much do I actually have to cut out of each side to produce that maximum volume? And to do this, we need to make a graph of our function. Now, we could use Desmos. Desmos is awesome. Desmos would actually make it really easy to zoom in and zoom out and find that max. But I'm going to try to do it on a TI-84 because that's what you're going to be allowed to use on the AP exam. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Y equals, type in the function, 11.5 uh, minus 2x times 8 minus 2x times x then we're going to have to adjust our window. Always be careful adjusting your window. So I first think about that domain that we just talked about. The x min is 0, the x max is 4. There's no reason to look before or after 4. And then, I mean, I don't know, maybe you have no idea what the max is. You could start off with just the area of the piece of paper, 8 times 11 and a half, and get a number that way. But I went ahead and just made the y max 100. I thought, all right, a volume of 100, you know, the piece of paper starts off with 8 by 11 and a half, so like that's not even going to be at 100 actually, and, and plus that wouldn't actually be, that'd be area, but it's just trying to give me a rough idea for what to put for that max value, for the y value. Then go ahead and hit graph in somewhere in that window, and that's what makes Desmos easier, is you'll be able to find it quicker, but if you mess around with your window a little bit, eventually you should be able to find that maximum value, and we see it right here. So, how do we find that max? Well, if you hit second trace on your calculator, there is a command for maximum. All you got to do is select the maximum command, and then it's going to ask you to do three things. It's going to ask you to click somewhere on the left, so just move your cursor a little bit to the left. Somewhere on the right, move your cursor a little bit to the right, and then you're going to go ahead and guess somewhere in the middle. As long as you're close, you're going to get the right answer. And what we see at the bottom of our screen is an X and a Y. Now remember, the Y is the output. That's our volume. So the maximum volume is 63.798 cubic inches. That would be the maximum volume that we could possibly get out of this piece of cardboard. And what would it take to produce that maximum volume? Well, that's our x value, and that x value is 1.548 inches. So if I get a real nice, super sophisticated ruler, and I measure out 1.548 inches from each corner of my piece of paper, fold it up, I will get the absolute biggest volume box that's possible. If I cut out more, I'm going to have a taller box, but it's going to be less volume. If I cut out less, I'm going to have a shorter box, but it's going to be less volume. So that's it. That's how simple the open box problem is. Overall, it's really not too difficult. The most difficult thing is understanding that when you cut out x from every single edge, your new lengths subtract 2x from them, the 8 minus 2x, the 11.5 minus 2x, and then the height is that x that gets folded up. Pretty simple, not too difficult, and then the calculator really takes care of the rest of it for you as long as you know how to use it. And again, if you are a Desmos user, please type the function into Desmos, and then it's really easy to zoom in and zoom out, and then you can just click to find that maximum value. But understanding what the X and the Y are are also super important. All right, that's it for the open box problem. Hopefully you loved it.